The Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and he has charged me to build a house at Jerusalem which is in Judah. Can we analyze this statement? Go back to verse 2. First of all, it was God that stirred his spirit. And the reason why God had to stir his spirit because at that time, Cyrus was the most significant ruler in the earth. So God was taking advantage of the authority that was rooted in his throne, being that his throne was a significant throne of authority in the earth. Do you realize that the name by which God was addressed in this scripture was the God of heaven? He was not called the God of heaven and earth. He was called the God of heaven because the house where he put his name was no longer existent. And the reason why God made a proclamation to commission the reconstruction of that house, oh, you're not with me. You need to follow me gradually. God used the authority of an earthly king to make a proclamation. A proclamation to the end that a building project must take place and it was the God of heaven that gave him the instruction now when we look at the nation Nigeria for instance it may seem that we may address God as a God of heaven because it seems that his purposes his plans his his intentions for us as a corporate persona has not seen the light of day. It's as if, okay, God reigns in the heavenlies, but he does not reign in Nigeria. Because the events that take place in the territory is incongruous with God's will, incongruous with God's design. And so Cyrus called God the God of heaven. So what happened to Cyrus's spirit was an invasion of heaven stirring him to take advantage of the authority that was in his throne to make a proclamation. And the proclamation, the content of the proclamation was that God was commissioning a building project in Jerusalem. And the reason why that was needed was because God wanted to restore his name Are you there? How many of you still remember the situation that happened at the temple when Jesus visited the temple and he overturned the table of the money changers? How many of you still remember? You don't remember it anymore. Now, I like to create to give us a little insight as to what was taking place around the temple that provoked Jesus. Jesus came to the temple area and saw transactions. The reason for which the transactions were needed was that in order for you to perform any religious activity within the vicinity of the temple, you will need a certain kind of currency. I know you are aware that the name of the currency in Israel is the shekel. But you see, if you are coming into the temple space, there is a different kind of shekel that is used in the temple area. So you will bring your mundane shekel and you will go and change it based on the forex definition of that day and you get temple shekel Are you there it is with temple shekel that you can do transactions within the temple area and the reason why the business of the money changers should flourish is because people are doing spiritual exercise in the temple but unfortunately a day came when the transaction, the forex business was prospering much more 
than the purpose for which the temple was established. You will notice that at that time, the, <laughs> there was a shift in emphasis. So Jesus came to restore the emphasis, the purpose for which the temple was put in place. He said, the design is that my house should be what? Even though the design was that the house of God, I want you to understand that the transactions that were taking place were legitimate transactions. To enable the people to have what it takes, the kind of currency with which they can do business in spiritual matters. But there was no spiritual matter taking place. But the business that is supposed to enhance spiritual matters was prospering without the matters. So Jesus had to visit the temple and he overturned the tables of the money changers and he made a statement, a statement of rectitude, a statement of rebuke, a statement that was designed to restore alignment. He said, my house, the purpose of my house, the reason for which my house is set up is so that it can be a house of prayer. That's why I put my name there. If you are still with me, say, Amen. You will notice that the first scripture that we read is in the book of Acts chapter 3. And in Acts chapter 3, you will see some brethren making their way to the temple at the hour of prayer. Are you there? My house is supposed to be a house of prayer. And when they were making their way to the temple at the hour of prayer, there was this brother that was immobilized. And he was kept at the gate of the temple that was called beautiful. I'm pressed for time, so I will not go into the background of how that gate and that name beautiful. So this guy was domiciled at the beautiful gate. And two brothers were trying to access the temple area for prayer. And then the guy that was domiciled at the gate began to ask for arms. Um, originally, the temple was supposed to be the place that sustains custody of the name of God. But if you see the expectation of the individual that was by the gate, you will understand that the same kind of thing that Jesus had to rebuke the other time had taken place because that was what shaped the expectation of what the crippled guy could get. The expectation he had was to get arms. It means that the purpose for which the building was standing there was lost in the time. And so his expectation was, can we get something? Because you guys do a lot of transactions here. They just brought some dollars from Central Bank now. And the transaction is booming so much that they've sold out. So if I stay by the temple, it is possible that one of the people who has had a powerful exchange might look upon me with mercy and something might come into my pocket. So his expectation was not prayer. His expectation was not a miracle. His expectation was nothing supernatural. He knew the kind of business that takes place in the vicinity and his expectation was drawn from what he knew that the vicinity held. Then, Peter and John now said, look on us. Because what they were trying to make him understand is that the house of God has shifted. The house of God was in this physical building, but it was still standing there but the name of the Lord was no longer in it. And that's why what he was expecting was not related to the name of the Lord, but it was related to the transactions that was in the vicinity. The guy was saying, look on us. Because the silver and gold you are looking for, we do not have. However, we have the name of Jesus. He was trying to make them understand, make him understand that whereas the name of Jesus is no longer in this physical building, the name of Jesus is in us. We are now God's building. 
And on the strength of that, hallelujah, hallelujah. And God mysteriously made it possible that day that they will not have silver and gold. So this man was about to be exposed to a new concept of what the house of God is. That it may be possible that we are lacking in silver and gold, just like you saw, we made an appeal for 400 million. Uh, we, uh, it's suggestive of the fact that there is a fatal lack in terms of silver and gold. But there is something that we have. 